Hi, welcome to the Wormhole. I am Jamie Birchall, and we have a very special guest with us this evening. I've been trying to do this for about six months, Phil Grimaldi. Finally got it on the calendar. I appreciate it very, very much. So, welcome to the Wormhole. We are a private and uh, club here in Houston, Texas, but we are open, and you can check us out at spacecityhouston.com or spacecity.pinball.com. Space City Pinball. Space City Pinball dot com and, dot com. And Wormhole Pinball dot com. And you could uh, see when we're open to the public and go from there. Uh, so a couple of months ago, we had a uh, interview. Travis Moseman did an impromptu interview, if you will, with Stephen Sil- uh, with Stephen Silver from Metamorphic. And it really was a fun interview. And, and Travis did a really good job. And we said, well, we're on to something here. We've Stephen's got- a fun guy. Yeah. He, he is. He's <laughs> yeah. He- and it was, we were like, hey, this is something we can do here. When, when people come into the wormhole, let's interview them. And let's, you know, interview interesting people in pinball and, and put it out on our channel and go from there. And then I think we'll do this as well on a podcast. So sure. yeah. we'll go from there. So, uh, Sounds good. All right. Let's start with the easy questions, right? These are layups. I even had a, uh, I printed everything out so that I could look professional like Teolis. All right. Okay. Obviously, how and when did you get into pinball? Sure. Uh, let's see. Graduate school. This okay. is like 2011, 2012, somewhere around there in, in Lafayette, Indiana. I was a graduate student at Purdue University, and uh, randomly a pinball arcade opened up right across the street from my apartment. And, uh, of course, I had to go in and check it out. Yeah. And something about it just immediately clicked with me i loved all were the, you a gamer before or i, I liked video games okay. and things like that and um i dabbled in pinball every now and again but uh it had been many many years and i uh started playing creature from the Gla- black lagoon yeah great pen i loved the uh the kitschiness of it and yeah. the, the sounds of it and then at some point in time you know i was just like everybody flipping the ball around just trying to stay alive as long as possible and then just by looking at the what was going on, figured out that there was actually rules, and I yeah. started reading it. And oh, if I try and spell film, what happens then? And then you keep playing, playing. Eventually, you unlock it, and it's amazing. Yeah. And there's just kind of this uh, wonder to it that uh, is hard that's to awesome. recreate, and that's I, like, hooked ever since. I th- I love that story because it happens to so many of us, right? Especially yeah. if you came from a gaming background or a sporting background, you go. All right, it's not just keeping this alive. There's ridiculous skill in this, but there's also a game in there that I've got to learn to play. Um, so how did you – you moved to Houston. Fast forward, you moved to Houston, and there's no competitive pinball, but you know you're good at pinball. So how did you get into the competitive side of it? I was I was playing competitive leagues in, in Lafayette prior to moving to Houston. Oh, wow. Um, so there was a – I ran a league there, Lafayette Pinball League, for – a few years before awesome. I left. And so I was running tournaments up in Indiana. And then I moved to Houston for work. Uh, took a postdoc at, at Rice and uh, a job shortly after that. There was, yeah, nothing as far as competitive pinball in Houston. Occasionally there would be a random tournament here and there at somebody's collection. Um, not a whole lot of location play. There was the game preserve. They occasionally had tournaments there. But they were kind of interesting. You know, they weren't really pinball tournaments even at the time. Some of the events there were like arcade slash yeah. pinball. T- like, so you had to be good at arcade games and So you could pinball. get like Popeye and then, yeah. you know. I would do really well at the pinball and right. just get smoked yeah. at the arcade yeah. games. <laughs> um, and um, eventually, so I was, I was traveling up to Dallas, over to Austin to go play in tournaments and stuff awesome. all the time. I met Matt Quantz along the way yeah. somewhere, and we... Uh, he had a huge collection of our uh, of pinball machines. We ended up being roommates for a year, um, and Which then we awesome. somewhere in there we decided to start uh, running our own tournaments and start the pin- Space City Pinball. Started with tournaments up in Game Preserve, and we were doing some stuff out of the house. And then somewhere I talked to Charlie Collis uh, of Joysticks, and he yeah. agreed to uh, bring in games from Joysticks into 1820 Lounge every week and we started the league there and that was wildly successful and it's just been kind of snowballing ever since then so tell let's talk about that because i think you've seen this league go bananas i think you've seen pinball go bananas as well pinball's gone bananas but i think um you know not everywhere has experienced the growth that we have right um and i think that's you know 
uh, a, a testament to the community that we have. Yeah. We kind of, um, by design, uh, have built in. Or we, we, we wanted to make sure we had excuse, uh, Sorry about have that. a very good community. We, uh, we emphasize, you know, we have our Discord. Um, we, we do a lot of community building stuff, events with, with our uh, members, and we uh, kick out the assholes. Yeah. Right? That's a very big, um, uh, important component. We have kind of yeah. a, a no asshole policy, and we also kind of. Uh, uh, n- nip in the bud any kind of uh, bad behaviors that are that kind of turn. I've seen other communities turn toxic if you don't hey, let, I, let that. Uh, yeah, no, no, I, I, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and I think you've done a really phenomenal job at, at doing that. And I understand that you're you're not rain, but you're 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 stepping down. Is that true? Is that what we're hearing? I uh, well, yeah. <laughs> We, we won't release this until no, 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 it's, it's fine. official. It's, it's not, uh, uh, you know, I'm not stepping down from okay. anything. At some point in time, um, you know, Mark Gammons approached me. He's like, hey, you should stop. You know, you don't need to be doing everything yourself. Yeah. You should set up a board. And I was like, yeah, it's a great idea. Um, at the time, he, he, I was running the monthly at Game Preserve, right. the downtown league, a couple other random stuff. I was doing all that myself. Then I met, you know, my now wife, and she's like, "What is going on? You're you're doing this pinball stuff constantly." So I'm yeah. like, "Yeah, need to dial that back a little bit." Um, and so since then, the board has really taken over, um, running all the stuff. I haven't run anything, yeah, in years. Well, people space to the open. Space to the open. That's it. And and honestly, um, and people still give me all this credit for Space City Pinball, but I haven't really been doing very little for several years. Um, so at this point, yeah, I'm just dialing back all my pinball um, stuff. I dismantled my my workshop at some point. Oh, now wow. I'm to focus on other things and, and get in, you know, just playing. Okay. Uh, so do you, are you going to play competitively still? Oh, yeah. Or? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So that you're, that's not going to stop. Just uh, at some point, you know, it was really during the pandemic I realized how burned out I was. You, you kind of like you, yeah. get, you get into this rhythm of doing stuff. And you're doing it, doing it. And at some point, you stop even realizing why you're doing it. And then once it was gone, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is great. Yeah. And then when it came back again, I was like, I don't know if I can go back at the level that I was I think it came before. back in Houston pretty f- bigger. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, we, we definitely saw a massive surge here. Uh, and, you know, a little bit of because of this place, you know. Oh, the wormhole has been, you know, a huge, huge boon to, yeah. to the league. It's um, – you know, it's become like the the de facto clubhouse for yeah. us, and I mean, can you imagine a better place to hang out? No. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, the story. You, everybody knows this. I quarantine here. Yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> so I mean, how do you get better than that? There were eight of us, and we all quarantined together, and we didn't want to f it up. So we were careful during you know COVID, because look at this place and what what it's become. So, you know, again. Uh, what was it? We just answered my that question right there. So, I, as a designer, as a good, uh, I have a design question for you. But as an interviewer, I'm I'm getting better. So we'll see yeah, from yeah, there. Yeah. But you you built a pinball machine called Felina. You totally redid. Has anyone? It's a re-theme. It's re-theme. A re-theme yeah, but sure. I mean, you don't get to see rethemes often, nor do you get to see that beautiful retheme. Where is it, and, and when, when are we going to ever see that again? It's in my house, and I doubt it'll ever see the light of day outside of my house again. Yeah. I live in a three-story townhome, and so all my games have to get lugged up yeah. upstairs on the second floor. So I brought it to Texas Pinball Festival and Houston Arcade Expo. And you lugged and it down, yeah. That was it, and that was like that was the tour, the public tour, and then it's 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 going to be. In I the miss house. Felina. It is a really cool machine, and I didn't really know you then, so I didn't really get to play it. And and there was such a line at TPF, and uh, so I was like, oh, oh shit. That's cool. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, mean, it was really cool. <laughs> I I mean, I was really happy with how it came out. It. I mean, the story behind it was it was during the pandemic, and. Uh, no, it was right before the pandemic. We were in Italy, 2019, for the IFPA World Championships, and we went to a a uh, bar Luca. It's a cafe in Milan, and it's designed by Wes Anderson, the director Wes yeah. Anderson. And he, in there, he like had these um, rethemed pinball machines that were rethemed after like stuff from his movies, and one of them was like Zisu, like uh, okay. after Life Aquatic. And I was looking at the re-theme, and it was like 
I was looking at it and it, it looked really cool, but it wasn't like professionally done. I'm like, I could do something like this. Wow. And we were going to get married soon. So I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if I did something like this for the wedding and we could have like a, something themed after ourselves and it'd just be something neat to have. It's wicked cool. And I, we need to post some pictures. I'll post it on, uh, on the wormhole just so that you could see it because it's really done. And we're, we're also very fortunate that you have some very, very good friends that are really good graphic oh, yeah. artists. I mean, it was uh, a team effort. I have a little credit card on there of everybody who helped it's, me out. It, it is And it's incredible. sort of a who's who of, of Space City Pinball. There's just a lot of talent in our community. Um, all right, shifting to more of the competitive questions here. Uh, you're currently ranked, I wrote it, 118th in the world. Okay. Okay. <laughs> do you look at that? Do you ever, I, do I you used to? to? I used to. Like um, religiously look at it? Well, I mean, it was always a goal of mine to qualify for the world championships each right. year. That was that was the goal. Um, and I I kind of prided myself on being the player that does the bare minimum to do that. I would. I don't travel a lot to tournaments. Okay. Um, I don't go to the, like TPF is the big one. I used to go to uh, Pinburg. Those are right. my two big tournaments a year. Pinburg's dead. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's try. So you you kind of need to be in the top. You know, for a while it was the top sixty ish, and now it's the kind of top seventy ish to okay. get in. Um, and then you know they started. I don't know. I, I stopped. Stopped caring at some okay. point, and they changed the rules. Now I used to. I'm not, I used to I'm look all the time, and I was in the three thousands. You know, and now I'm two thousand and eighteen or some bullshit, and I I just I I don't know. I, I was just curious if if I have this joke where I call our, myself the amateurs and the pros, <laughs> and when I'm playing with pros, I always wonder if they uh, if they check it as much as I do. So I don't like. I mean, I would rather win tournaments than yeah. be ranked highly. Sure. And, and okay. so like if. Uh, if I'm ranked highly, but I'm just you know doing like mediocre at yeah. tournaments, it's not that fun yeah. for me. I right. I have fun when I win. I mean, I have, I have fun when I'm just playing. But I if I take it too seriously, it really kind of dig. You know, it's not as fun anymore. So try to try to not care too much. Because about the, uh, the at the end of the day, it, just like any competition, one of the reasons I quit golf is uh, I was obsessed with golf and I was obsessed after the kids got older of getting back down to the two handicap that I used to be and it you guess what I'm f almost 50 and I can't do that and so and so then in golf and in, and in pinball I started doing the same bullshit of the competitiveness in me and then I stopped having fun and I said all right I'm only going to commentate well I mean uh, at one point in time like I would before tournaments I would study the rules. I, right. I used to make flashcards before tournaments to like remember the rules for them, make sure I know every single game oh, wow. in and out that's going to be in a tournament. Beforehand, I would try and scout things out, find the skill shot for everything. At some point in time, I'm like, this is way too much energy. Yeah. And then the games started getting more and more complex. Like some of the games that were coming out, especially during the pandemic, like Avengers. Sure. Like that. I'm like, I don't have Jiminy time to Christmas. learn. This, this yeah. is getting out of hand. I don't have time for this. And it, I started to resent it because I would. Yeah. I was not playing well because I wasn't putting in the energy anymore. And then uh, it kind of uh, kind of got old. Uh, you, you do look calm when you play, though. Do you get nervous? Are you nervous uh, if, you, if, say, you're – like, I get verklempt, if you will, if I'm not hitting the shot and I can't hit it and hit it and hit it. I you guys just I, well, I just noticed you just eh, I'll go on to something else. I'm not hitting that today. Um, there's a great book called The Inner Game of Tennis. Uh, it's, okay. it's about tennis strategy, but it applies to all all walks of kind of competition, really. Um, and, you know, one of the main things that it emphasizes is you need to just accept, you know, what happens happens. It's neither okay. good or bad. Yeah. And you need to, to, to kind of let your automatic um, self kind of take over and not you got to get your ego out of the way oh my god how hard is that to get do? your ego out of the way and just let let yourself play pinball so you take a deep breath breathe in and just play um i, I like to do I'll, I'll repeat little mantras in my head yeah good to to prevent to prevent my ego from thinking out loud or okay for, or for for kind of taking over the thought process and just letting my my muscle memory kind of uh, take hold so in I'm watching this thing on that. That's the next round, and, and I'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up in a little bit. But uh, well, I was watching this Netflix special on full swing. It's kind of like the F1 for golfers, right? And, again, I like golf. But 
after the round, they would go, and I watch you guys, you would go and practice the shots that you weren't hitting. And it, 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 it is repetition. It is getting comfortable with the machines. It, it really is it's, it's very impressive that you guys do that. So if you miss a shot, it's like it's either early or it's late. And you didn't, it's not good or bad. You know, you either, you, you either flip too early, you flip too late, or you flipped right on time. But as soon as you start applying kind of some sort of judgment to it or judgment to yourself, like I suck or yeah. or that was terrible, you, you're like you lost it. You lost the game at yeah, that point. You're right. Just shake it off and move on and, and, and go from there. That's that's pretty damn good advice you guys just got there from one of the best players in Houston, if not in the United States, so in the world, one eighteen, pretty damn good. Uh, what are your pinball you kinda touched on this a little bit, but any major pinball goals coming forward? Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, tournament director retirement. Yeah, and, at Space uh, City Open. Is this your last Space City? Or you're done? This is, this is my last one, and then yeah. I'll be, be running it as okay. uh, the TD. And then um, I'll kind of be helping in the yeah. future. And then, um, you know, I'm, I'm play I happen to be in Cleveland uh, coming up in September, and okay. I'm going to play in the Cleveland Pinball Open, I think awesome. it's called, their Cleveland Pinball Show. Great. And, but other than that, no, I have no big goals. Um, All right. No, but I mean... One of the things that you've been really great, and I wanted to thank you on camera here, is that you've really helped us make these pinball machines harder because it was taking forever. 4X was taking 12 hours. Uh, you've also really helped us set up the rules on not only the machines but how we should do these two-day tournaments or how we should you know, get certified and all these great things. And you've really helped the wormhole uh, become what it is. So I want to thank you that very no, much. I really appreciate pleasure. it. None of this stuff is easy and it's not obvious. And yeah. if, it's, if it's not for people helping each other, uh, nothing gets done. And putting up in my ass with the streaming equipment because I was the worst pupil. And now look at it. Look at it. It's I, amazing. It, it, it looks, does look it really good. It really looks good. So that's it. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Phil Grimaldi, the godfather of Houston Pinball, uh, one of the godfathers, him and Matt Quantz and everybody else. And uh, I just wanted to do this. I think it's important that when important people come through the wormhole, we sit down with them for 15 minutes. Sounds good, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I really yeah. do. Thank you.